Imagine you are trying to answer a research question to understand if exposure E causes disease outcome Y. Two examples of such research questions are Does chemotherapy X increase the five year survival of patients with breast cancer compared to no treatment? Or should the emergency department of a hospital take into account the possibility of more heart attacks in middle aged men on the evening in which a World Cup final is lost? compared to a regular evening. Within both of these research questions, you are trying to determine if exposure to E increases or decreases the risk of outcome Y compared to unexposed individuals. However, if we ask these causal research questions, how can we know for sure that a change in outcome risk that you find is actually due to the exposure E that you are interested in? To be able to answer that, we need to carefully set up our study so that we can confirm the cause of the outcome. We can do that by comparing two groups, one with exposure and one without the exposure. Let's apply this to the first research question we introduced about the effectiveness of chemotherapy X. Remember that we want to find out if chemotherapy X increases the 5-year survival rate of patients with breast cancer. In our design, we will compare a group that is exposed to the therapy to one that is not exposed, because they are not treated. When we look at the results, however, we might ask ourselves if the effect that we saw was actually caused by the treatment with the chemotherapy. The difference between the groups might also be caused by other reasons than the exposure. For example, mortality within our exposed group might be lower because the exposed group was younger than the non-exposed group. In other words, age may confound the relation between exposure and outcome. In situations of confounding, we see a relationship between exposure E and outcome Y that can actually be explained by confounder C. In practice, this means that confounding always needs to be considered in a study that makes a claim about a causal effect. We need to be sure that we are indeed looking at an association that represents the real causal effect and not one that is confounded by other factors. So how might we identify confounding factors? To identify confounding factors, it can be helpful to draw out the relation between the exposure, outcome and other variables related to the exposure or outcome. We will apply this to the second example we discussed. We are interested in finding out whether there is a difference in heart attack rate between the evening of the World Cup final and the regular evening. To identify variables that could confound the association between loss of World Cup final and heart attack rate, it can be helpful to draw the relation between the exposure, outcome and other variables related to the exposure or outcome. To identify variables related to the exposure and outcome, you could use existing literature and expert knowledge. For example, the temperature of the day or the day of the week might also be variables that are known to affect the number of heart attacks. You might want to take these into account when you compare your exposed and unexposed groups. A nice rule of thumb to list possible confounders is to think of possible risk factors for the outcome, such as the ones we just mentioned. When listing possible confounders, it is important to take the natural course of time into account. A possible confounder is present earlier in time than the exposure. For example, the temperature of the day. Your drawing of the relationships might benefit by ordering the variables along a timeline. We can also come up with variables that are related to the exposure and outcome, but that do not confound the effect of the exposure on the outcome. For instance, the inflammatory marker tumor necrosis factor alpha may rise because of World Cup final loss and is related to heart attacks as well. However, this variable is on the causal pathway from the exposure to the outcome. As such, it does not confound the effect between World Cup final loss and the development of a heart attack. Generally speaking, to assess possible confounding factors in a study, you can 1. Think of risk factors for the outcome of interest based on existing literature and expert knowledge, and 2. Disregard variables that are on the causal pathway from the exposure to the outcome. To conclude, when you next read about a study that makes claims about causal effects, carefully assess if the authors thought about possible confounders. Also consider if the study properly adjusted for possible confounders. And if you are to set up a study that looks at causal effects, make sure that you have taken all possible confounding factors into account and have made adjustments in your design to accommodate for them.
Remember that a drawing, including all of the relationships and a timeline can be very helpful in judging whether confounders were properly addressed. The following materials can also help you to think about this.